Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And during this live broadcast, we would love to hear from you. So give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And remember, you can always send us an email, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. A lot's going on. Lots Today going. is the National Day of Prayer, and this evening you'll be praying in downtown Birmingham. Yes, this is a time all over the country people are gathering for prayer, some right in city halls of our nation, other places throughout the country, and yeah, we'll be there with about 25 to 30 ministers and leaders in Birmingham. This is a time for us all to pray and not complain, pray. Yes. And, and, the, stu and students are also meeting at the flagpole. That was happening today, okay. too. So in, during this National Day of Prayer, which was started a long time ago in our country, so we continue the great tradition and pray for our countries, again, our leaders. That verse, the prayer verse, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. I'll heal the land. And so we're called to pray and to live the gospel. Today is the day you're united with millions of people in the United States of America. We invite everybody else throughout the world to pray for America and to pray for your nations. And then we want to give a great um, shout out to Jonette Bankovic, who will be speaking at the UN next Friday. So she gets to share on Fatima. They've Our asked lady. her to come in and share. So we want you to do hashtag Fatima 100 hashtag Fatima, and hashtag pray for Jeanette. She needs our prayers. That's a wonderful honor that they have bestowed upon her to come and share all about the beauty of prayer and the beauty yeah. of Our Lady yeah. in the world. Amen. And Joy, let's share a little bit about our weekend last weekend. And I'm sure a lot of you are in the same situation with children and grandchildren being confirmed. We had Grandparents Day. We had two communions. We went from one end of the state to the other end of the state as a number of these things were happening all at the same time. It was absolutely beautiful. So first we had Gabby, who is Anna and Ronaldo's oldest daughter. She made her confirmation mm -hmm. at St. John the Baptist in Madison Catholic Church where her parents were married. And the preparation. And the preparation. For her confirmation over the months was really wonderful. And it wasn't just getting done. I mean, the instruction, uh, the retreat, other high school, college students coming in, speaking about what confirmation is, what confirmation does, what you're facing out in high school, in college, in the business world, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. It was a great day. And it was, we were really excited. And Gabby, as one of her sponsors, had one of her high school teachers who had fallen in love with Gabby, and then they found out that they're both Catholic, and, you know, they, so she was Gabby's sponsor, which and was wonderful. Some of our other family came to that time, especially one of our grandchildren, Nathan. Yeah. There may be a picture there. Yeah. But Nathan and Gabby, and they could wear sandwich in between them. They're like 13 years old, and they're like and six they're foot one. And they're taller than us. Yeah. Well, no great, I mean, we're, we think we're tall. We're five six, you're five nine, but they're really tall grandkids. Don't tell my height. So we, yeah. we were there with them and that was lots of fun. And then we had to go to Jude's Grandparents Day, yeah. which was absolutely wonderful at St. Francis. And that was here in town. Right. And then the following sad well, that I Saturday. Wanna do, I want to do Grandparents Day. Okay. Um, I always love going to his desk. And I didn't sit in the desk this year, but I think you sat I in did, the desk yeah. this year. And uh, the, the, there was so many, I mean, Catholic education. They had the mm. virtues there and all the different saints. We took a picture of him by St. Therese. And the thing that was, a lot of it was like what we were brought up in. But then there was this cabinet, and it had all iPads in it or computers. And that's really an amazing thing, that mm. even at that age, that early There's age. There's no books. Well, there's some books, but yeah, yeah everything's computerized and mm -hmm. an iPad, but it was a, a great, great day there. So then we did First Communion. Then we did First Communion with Jude, and uh, Jude had a reading part, and then the, the class sang. And at St. Francis here in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, the training is is par excellent, and Father yeah. Sullivan did an 
unbelievable job. Yeah. And, and yet again, thanks all the parents for the great sacrifice that they make to have their kids in Catholic education. And then also the great commitment that the parents make also with the PSR. Yeah. You know, you, it, it doesn't, it's not just an event. I mean, it really is oh. discipling what we're doing. And it was just so beautiful to welcome yet another grandchild to the feasting table okay, so of we, we did that first communion, then we traveled, oh my gosh, we only got one minute to Sienna. So, so then we Sienna. had cake, we had to do cake. Jude wanted us to do cake with him, we did quick cake, and then we traveled an hour and a half up the road uh, to be with Sienna, who was making her first communion <laughs> at uh, St. John, the same church that Gabby made her first confirmation. Yeah. So we did that, and she was absolutely stunning, and yeah. just beautiful, yeah. And, yeah. and we just so enjoyed being with them. And the other grandparents came to both events, who their pro Protestant and because that's what tr the tradition they were raised in and they were faithful grandparents they didn't understand all that was going on but they understood that something spiritually significant yeah. was happening in their grandchildren's lives and they were showing up for so it it's, so beautiful it's, it's great thank God for priests and everybody who make this possible the catechist today we're going to speak with Ann Getze she's an artist and she's featuring the visitation order founded by Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantel you are in for an incredible treat. Um, Anne's aunt was a part of that order for 60 years in Annecy, France. So over the years, Anne took pictures, got to know the sisters, the nuns behind closed doors, and brought together a beautiful convergence, beautiful, of that incredible city, the natural beauty, uh, the, the creation of, of beautiful cathedrals and chapels and, and homes, but also the spiritual beauty inside of those doors. Don't go away. We'll be right back. More to come. Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family. We want you to be a part of our show today. So if you have a question for our beautiful guest, Ann Getze, give us a jingle during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling outside of North America, you can reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And hopefully we will use your very wise question or comment right here on the air. Well, today is a privilege. You want to take a journey down. Uh, you want to see beauty. You want to know more truth. Um, and that's the greatness about the Catholic Church. So today we're going to bring to you Anne Getze, who is an artist. And she has done some incredible work. And she's had a journey to Annecy, France, where her aunt was uh, a, a cloistered nun. But Anne, I want you to tell our family a little bit at home um, about who you are, how you got your training, um, and you, about your travels and your connection to your aunt in Annecy, France. Well, probably to back up um, as an artist and a photographer, I come from a family of artists and photographers. My father was a great photographer. Uh, my mother uh, really instilled in all of us, there's five girls in the family, and uh, the beauty of nature and to appreciate mm -hmm. those things. So it, uh, it all came together. And um, I was also a retouch artist for years uh, on the album covers and um, 20 years and 20 pounds off people, things oh. like that. So mm -hmm. that <laughs> helped so train me. So you made magic happen. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all by hand back mm -hmm. then. So um, nothing digital. Mm -hmm. So that helped uh, train me to manipulate a photograph by hand. And that's what's evolved into this work. Uh, and as I would travel to Annecy, uh, back and forth, probably a span of 20 years, it began as just taking pictures because it's so beautiful there. Uh, the whole scenery of Annecy and it's so old and the architecture and the clean water and um, everything about it uh, just it was very enchanting. So I would photograph and 
absorb all of that. But then the time spent at the monastery with my aunt uh, was even deeper and even more beautiful. Yes. And as I got to know them and, and how they lived their lives. And so I think what turned into just trying to capture beauty at first turned into also a documentary uh, uh, idea of wanting to uh, yeah. show how important mm -hmm, Tell us a little was. bit about your Aunt Helen. Uh, where, where was she from? How did she wind up there in France? Why didn't she become part of the order you know, in America? A little bit about her and her journey. Mm -hmm. She uh, was a nun in uh, Wheeling, West Virginia okay. at Mount de Chantel. And um, so it was uh, my, my father and Aunt Marilyn, who's still with us. So, um, but she went over to France to study French and music and to come back and teach. Yeah. But when she went over there, she just felt that that was where she needed to be. Mm -hmm. And that's where she went and spent the rest of her life. So, you know, they kind of find humor in that too because they have the vow of silence over there. So for her to go over to yeah. speak French was mm -hmm. another challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bless her so you started, you said you went over for about 20 years? Back and forth. Mm -hmm. and about every three years or so. And you would visit with her? Mm -hmm. Yes, be able to stay um, right there at the monastery with their family quarters. Wow. So. And you, I, I've seen some of the photographs and then I've watched, you know, we've watched uh, the video, mm -hmm. um, but it seems like you've got pictures like inside where you're not supposed to be or something, you know what I mean? Like well, the, we can see the sisters there and everything. Yeah, at first. And it's wonderful. Yes, at first, you know, <laughs> it was, it, but I think as time went by, they yeah. were more comfortable with me yeah. and and then pretty soon there was like, oh, there she is again with mm -hmm. the camera. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they just kind of put up with me, I think, mm -hmm. in, a, yeah. in certain ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. So their motto was pray to love, love to pray. That's one of their mottos. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be celebrating their 450th anniversary to St. Francis de Sales, right? Well, of his birth. Yes. Now they were founded in 1610, but this year is the 450th anniversary of St. Francis de Sales. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that will be there in Annecy. Mm -hmm. They'll be coming from all around the world to have the pilgrimages, you know, there and follow the footsteps of St. Francis de Sales. So will your an exciting art, time. Will in, your artwork be on display there? I wish. Mm -hmm. I want it to go back to Annecy so mm -hmm. it, you know, goes full circle. Mm -hmm. Now, I will go back there during that period of time when the sisters will be coming from all around the world so I can document them. So you have this exhibit. It's like a multimedia mixed exhibit, uh, yes. which entails uh, video, uh, short like film, and then you've got these pictures that you've taken and made them into pieces of, of art. Um, so all this is, is together, and that you've titled what is it? Pr that's pray to pray love. To love. Pray to mm -hmm. love and love mm -hmm. to pray. Mm -hmm. So that's part of your exhibit. Um, so it, just explain, unpack that more fully. It, it is so incredibly beautiful, and I hope that everybody goes to your website to see that video. Joy and I just watched it last night after reading over all your materials. And and like you were saying earlier, it, so much of it is about beauty, mm -hmm. because what you do, and I'm taking your stuff here. I'm trying to understand. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but. The, the, the beauty of the natural created order there in Annecy is breathtaking. And so you've really captured that as far as I know. I've not been there, but I mean, the, the mouth, it's by the Alps, right? I mean, oh, yes, yes. So, so I mean, the, the mountain, mountains, the, the rivers going through, and then that's beauty. And I want you to unpack that more fully because you took the pictures, you're there, and then this is how I see it. And then the, the beauty of, of your family. I mean, that really comes across. Your love for your aunt, seeing pictures of her, uh, your, your family. I mean, I really, we felt like when we looked into it, you really invited us into your family, and that's beautiful. And then, of course, the family of, of the sisters, yeah. seeing them as nobody's seen them before, and this all converges together. So continue to unpack that for us. Yeah, and you know, it even dispelled ideas that I think I had early on of, of, that they lived behind these walls and 
that it may not be very happy and just all of those things and then when I was in their presence it just really shattered all those ideas that I'd had in my head because they don't own anything but they have joy yes you know they live simply and they have peace mm -hmm. they, they, they they pray for the world and nobody I thought well nobody does that but my own mother to mm -hmm. pray every day mm -hmm. for you know mm -hmm. the world and uh, and for me and for my son it was just um, love is really what you felt mm -hmm. every time you were around them and that they had the joy and yeah. patience and you know another one of the, the mottos is humility and gentleness and that emits how we need humility and gentleness in our lives and in this world, in the world. today so and when you went over and you started taking pictures I mean, how did it evolve to what it is now? Like, did you, you just taken the pictures and then you're like, oh, you had a collection of pictures? Or did you say, gosh, I need to do something with this? I mean, how did it go from Anne going over taking pictures to the beautiful artwork and displays that you have? It was almost just like you said. Mm -hmm. They went into a box and then mm -hmm. they kept, I kept pulling them out and going, boy, I really want to do something with this. Mm -hmm. Boy, I really want to do something with this. And, um, then I, I thought, okay, I've got enough of a body of work to start the paintings. Mm -hmm. And um, then as my aunt came closer to the end of her life, I felt that urgency mm -hmm. to gather more and uh, get busy. Um, then I went back for her funeral and they got this little mm -hmm. book here. Mm -hmm. And within that, it had her writings um, of things that were for from the retreat and things so that's I incorporate that into the short film and the captions for mm -hmm. the paintings. Can I hold it? And then mm -hmm. um, yeah. the uh, mm. now the the sisters in Tearingham, uh, Massachusetts, I sent them the titles to the paintings and color copies of the paintings and then they wrote the captions. So it's all entwined mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. and then the music on the video is the sisters singing so this is her book like 60 years yeah that she was in this is a little book of your precious aunt and they'll get to know your aunt if they see that video and see the pictures like we saw her absolutely at her youngest time going in and delightful and and you said she listed all the different sisters that were there over her time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're all here, and some mm -hmm. of the quotes and reflections, yeah. and you you got this. Yeah, and a lot with the St. Francis of Sales, you know, with the little virtues that they mm -hmm. have, yeah. um, that's in there, humility, and patience, simplicity, those um, things that, w you know, we can all do in our everyday life mm -hmm. and incorporate. And, you know, there's such a strong group of women. They just seem so little and petite and... But boy, they're, they're tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are tough. I, I great loved when women. you shared that. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some beautiful yeah. reflections from you and quotes from you, and it was just good to hear a woman uh, so admire and respect and clarify some things, you know, about these particular nuns or any nuns that are cloistered that people just don't know. And you just mm -hmm. say their strength, their courage, their their beauty. And uh, gosh, we need to hear that, especially at a time when vocations seem to be waning for so many. Yeah. And I, what's the status with and the, the vocation? And they're struggling. They're struggling. Um, but but because they are closed, cloistered, and you know, away from the world, um, people aren't going to know about them. But if they search that out, or maybe if this travels around and they have that awareness and exposure, I, I think it would uh, really appeal to a lot of women out there. But as a contemplative, you know, they don't right. um, mm -hmm. have a recruiting mm -hmm. uh, yes. Do office. The, are the <laughs> nuns that are there, are they from all over the world? Or how many were there that were from the States? Yeah, now in Annecy, they're from mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the States, they're pretty much here in the States. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this exhibit is traveling to the monasteries that are around here. And now there's a little story about that because um, the exhibit started off at a museum, the Customs House in Nashville, and it was sponsored by the Nashville Arts Magazine. And after that exhibit, it was to go to my gallery, the Arts Company in Nashville, and I thought, boy, what if this could go 
to the monastery so then the sisters could mm -hmm. see them. Yeah. You know, right? Because mm -hmm. they never get yeah. out, so how would right. they ever see it? Right. And some of them don't even have the computers with mm -hmm. the internet, so mm -hmm. they wouldn't see it. And I thought, well, that's might be crazy. But within two weeks, I get an email from Sister Susan Marie in Brooklyn, New York. Good and old Brooklyn. She said, yeah. <laughs> she said, you know, I was looking up on the internet to take her retreat, and up popped Annecy, mm -hmm. where she wanted to go. And then up popped an article, the article about that exhibit. Wow. So she said, would you be interested in bringing that exhibit okay. up to New York? She mm -hmm. said, I, I feel like this is divine providence. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I said, oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So you got so to do that. So that's how it started. Right. You got yeah. to do that. And then where other, where else have you been able to display? Name the monasteries, the other places okay, you've been. Okay, it's been, been um, to Mobile, mm -hmm. Alabama. Mm -hmm. The monastery there, which is also used as a retreat center. Mm -hmm. It's been to um, St. Paul, Minneapolis at the St. Mary's Basilica. Mm -hmm. And they have the monastery up there with the school and then also um, uh, sisters that have a house that they work with the poor. And now recently it went to Georgetown, D.C. with okay. the school and the monastery that's there. Mm -hmm. okay. now, where are some of the other monasteries in America? You said Brooklyn. Uh -huh. Well, hopefully Mobile. 2018 will be St. Louis, Toledo, yeah. Tiringham, yeah. Uh, Richmond, and Annecy. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And then maybe, what, Spain? I mean, they're all over the yeah. place. Well, that's what I was yeah, yeah. wondering. Joe, let's Make take an email. Ex okay, we're going to go straight to an email, Anne. It says, how long did it take you to create all these paintings with the nuns? And do you plan to do more? This is Jeff from Hastings, Michigan. Oh, well, um, the photography spans 20 years. And I would say um, solid two to three years of painting um, the paintings, mm -hmm. of just really being immersed in the How paintings. many years? Two to three two, years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you hope to, th this is a, a project, an exhibit that you hope to expand. Yes. So mm -hmm. you want to do more regarding Annecy, and that's, y your video is on Annecy, the, the artwork is about Annecy, but you're saying, if I'm understanding correctly, you want to go to some of the other monasteries, tell their stories of what they're doing, because they're very unique in and of themselves. They are. And, and in terms of their mission and ministry and prayers, and chronicle their stories, I guess, maybe through uh, you know, video plus artwork. Is that right? Right, and it's it's the same connection because of that you know graceful, peaceful, beautiful lives that they live, uh, and it's just documenting you know in a visual way too, and then how their response is when the exhibit comes to that and they see with the mother church with the yeah. of how it's all tied together. Mm -hmm. So. so beautiful and hopefully you know I mean when we were looking upon it, it w and we had a kind of crazy week I did specifically <laughs> at the center it was just it was just a bad week with humanity and um, and so w when we it was so it was like I went on a retreat just looking at your artwork because it was calming it was peaceful it was beautiful and it was enriching and I said, I would sure like to go to Annecy. How beautiful that is. Yeah. And they do, and, they and have retreats. And you're really just capturing the beauty of just the town of Annecy and, and the beauty of that. And then you get to take a window in to say, look and see who these women are. Um, how, and it, it really was, it was absolutely wonderful. And it was really, so y you can go and look on, at the website and look at the artwork and, it's so helpful for your own soul, and I'm sure you experience yeah. that every time you journeyed there, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you, how could you not, when you encounter holiness and beauty and truth, you are forever changed. Yes, I, I felt always honored, mm. like yeah. I was, you know, very honored to be there. And, you know, all the monasteries that are here, most of them offer retreats also mm -hmm. that you can go to. Wonderful. And so... That would be interesting for a lot of folks to go. So you could go on to a retreat right. at their monasteries. Mm -hmm. and, and Or visit them and here in the States them. as well. Yeah. yeah, the ones here in the States. Well, let's take a break at this point. Plenty more to come about this multifaceted art exhibit, this convergence of natural beauty, spiritual beauty within uh, the confines of the Visitation Sisters, bringing together the saints, uh, Francis de Sales, Jane de Chantel, 
Uh, it is absolutely beautiful. You need to go to the website. I'm sure that's up there. Plenty more to come. We want to hear from you. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. So if you have a question for Anne, you can give us a jingle right here during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. And you can always go to her website, AnnGetzi.com. Now, her name is not spelled Getzi. Let me tell you how it's spelled. It's A N N E G O E T Z E.com. AnnGetzi.com. What is the nationality of Getzi? German. German. There you go. I think it's Wutz if it's pronounced. Okay. Well, you'll want to go to that website, AnnGetzi.com. You can see the artwork there. Um, I think you can see some of how it's developed. You can watch the video, Pray to Love, and it will be the most blessed 10 minutes you know, of, of your day at least. Uh, so please, we strongly recommend that. And share with us, you know, we're getting familiar and people are just hearing for the first time with your work. But, but the process, uh, you know, you, you've taken these beautiful pictures and then you've got paintings, oil painting plus other elements that you put into that. And it took a while for me to understand, you know, I thought the paintings were separate, the artwork was separate, but somehow the paintings and the artwork are together. Speak a little bit about the process and some of the particular pictures you want to mention. Okay. Yes, and that was another reason to do the short film would be to help show what that process right. is because it's not straight photography and it's not straight painting. Um, it's joining the two together. So a lot of it is film, yeah. black and white film. Um, and then, of course, digital comes along, but it's still the same process. And it is um, a lot of layers and glazes uh, that's put on, and then it's also the push and pull. So it's impressionism and realism that goes between uh, the medium. Uh, so hopefully you don't know if it's a painting or a mm -hmm. photograph. Okay, let me just say this. Layers of what? I, I, you speak to somebody who's oh, an artist. Oh, okay. Like I said to you before, I'm not a chef, but I know good food, and I'm not an artist, but I know good stuff. You got it, but I can't explain it. When you and say layers, oils. when we say push and pull. Mm -hmm. Yes, with okay. oil. I work with oil paints. Okay. But then in certain areas, I started mixing it with ashes. Yeah, with you said that. Wood, you? wood ashes. That's mm -hmm. What made sifted. you do that? Um, to give it texture. Okay. You had to give it texture. And then I also was thinking... I, I did a lot of those paintings right after my aunt's funeral, so I, that became an even deeper um, thing to translate of how we're ashes to ashes, dust mm. to dust, and so working wow. in there with the ashes here and there in the paintings and stuff, it, it gave a little more um, depth and three-dimensional uh, look to it. So when you finished your process of the prints, the artwork, um, how did they come about being named? How did, how did the prints get named? How did, who titled your artwork? Well, I titled them. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, these need captions to mm -hmm. really go deeper. And I tried and I tried. <laughs> Nothing really, you know, how do you incorporate, how do you write all of that? There was so much information. Um, and I was actually on the phone with one of the sisters in Tiringham, Massachusetts. And she spoke so beautifully and eloquently and she told me that uh, you know with with the power of prayer it's a higher consciousness mm -hmm. that uh, brings about change to the good and just that one quote that she said um, I asked her if they would write the captions mm -hmm. for the paintings mm -hmm. Wow yeah. so they yeah. agreed and I sent them copies of the paintings and then they meditated on that mm -hmm. and yeah. wrote the captions and which it, are beautiful and the captions are beautiful and when you see the captions you just you're drawn yes mm -hmm. it's like it like solidifies what it well, is this is the deal you know i mean i hope the people are 
getting it, because we're certainly getting it, is that, I mean, the, the captions are really spiritual messages. They're going to be beautiful by these nuns that dedicate their lives for scores of years. And then you're looking at beautiful things, natural, supernatural. And it's just like an amazing, you know, beautiful experience in a world filled with so much ugliness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always say to Joy when we're getting ready to watch TV, whatever, I say, can we see something beautiful anywhere on TV? Or do we have to go to an art museum? And maybe we do, but... This and if we're not watching EWTN, which we're always looking for something beautiful, I'll go to the Turner Classics. And we'll, you watch older movies oh, yes. so that, because you, I want to be enriched. And if I'm relaxing, I want to be blessed, right? And the, the lighting. Yeah, and, and the, the lighting and, and, the, and the quality of the people is so beautiful. What are some of your favorite pictures, paintings that you've done from them or some that you want to mention? Yeah, you know, there's some that seem to speak in, you know, more of this maybe iconic way of the body of work and, and one of them is called The Bird in Hand. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yes, and I just, you know, I, uh, I think a lot even when I'm, you know, anxious and fretting over silly things, but um, of how God holds us all in the palm of his hand mm -hmm. and you know, if he if he watches over the birds of the field, how much more will he watch yeah. over us? But you know, it represents those things to me, and it has a calming effect. It is an absolutely beautiful it. picture painting in what you do. You know, with the with the sister holding her hand out in that bird. And I tell you, when I yeah, saw that, expression. besides beauty, oh, yeah. it really is a challenge because I say, do I really believe that? I mean, for me, and really, I struggle with that. You know, is God really, do I believe, I can believe that for you and you, but not for me. And it's, it's a beautiful challenge to say, Jim, you know, this is a part of God's thing. You know, like, you really like that. I, it just, it's a challenge and it's a beautiful thing. And I guess I just need to accept that aspect of God, right? But I love mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Other ones? Um, well, there's one that's called, Do You Have the Right Soul? And it is the out sister. She's walking up the street there in Annecy, but she's leaving the old, she's left the monastery. Mm -hmm. She's leaving the old part yeah. of Annecy and then walking into the new and the modern. Mm -hmm. And even just with her, you know, they've been around since 1610, the mm -hmm. habit hasn't changed, mm -hmm. and then she's entering into the hustle and bustle of the more modern world. It's just that contrast, mm -hmm. and, and that, but, that, but that they stay the same. Right. You and, know? And, and what's I, the, do you have the right soul? What, uh -huh. what is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the right soul is really because of her you know, shoe. My sister, you know, oh. came up with that. She said, well, let us see her, her tennis shoe, yeah. her old okay. black shoe. I was thinking of soul. But that's how soul. it's, yeah. And, and I think that's yeah. a great, that, that is a haunting question for the world today, for our own lives. You've got so much, but do you got the right soul? Mm -hmm. Do you have the right soul? I mean, wow. How do, how do we answer that as we look at things? I love the one where they're at your aunt's funeral when they're in procession, oh, right? Oh, the procession. And what, what is that one titled? Uh, that, that is called The Procession. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it was uh, in the winter mm -hmm. and it seemed like it was just dark and gloomy. But mm -hmm. even then the sisters had joy mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and stuff because of course they knew where she was mm -hmm. and you know, so, and they were comforting to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then we were walking back and the sun came out, you mm -hmm. know, at the end. Yeah. And, you know, and those sisters are so little and that one in the front, if you see it on the yeah, website, the, carrying that cross, thing, yes, yeah. it looked like mm -hmm. it was, you know. Mm -hmm. Was it a heavy cross? It was a heavy cross. Mm -hmm. And I thought, boy, they are just tough. Mm -hmm. So you capture that <laughs> in a picture and then made it into a painting through the process that you do. Right, and that's a larger painting too. Mm -hmm. That's about a 40 by 40 size. That Beautiful. painting. Okay. Well, now there's yeah. a, there's a picture of or painting picture or painting of a number of the sisters like there's three sisters together and they look just like they're oh, cutting up so or something. Cute. What yeah. is that about? Yeah, that one's the see no evil. Yeah, see no hear no speak no evil. And the one um, to the side is my aunt Helen. The one in the middle is Sister Anne Marie. She's the only American that's left over there in okay. Annecy. And the other one's Sister Renee. So. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once again, they just have that community and camaraderie. Oh, and, their faces are like you know. lit on fire. They're so alive and there's so much light. And yeah, laughter. So beautiful. Just. Yeah. Like, don't be sorry for me. You know, and I, we share this often. And we're, you know, sometimes we don't take, we take for granted 
the power of prayer, of the religious life, and all of the orders all over the world that are just praying for the world. And you know, you think, if they weren't praying, what would the state of humanity be? Mm -hmm. You know, and it, you, I can't imagine, you know, and it just so we're ever so grateful and for your, the beautiful work that you unveil. I mean, you lift the veil so that we get to see the beauty of, of what how these, they live. Yeah, how they live and, and how they love and how they pray. Well, we have another email and it says, I love how some of your paintings show the nuns as laughing and smiling, truly enjoying life. Do you think this would help recruit new members who may think of the monastic life as somber and serious instead of joyful? And this is Donna from Oklahoma. I would think so because um, I was so enlightened by being around them. Mm -hmm. And so this was what this is what I saw and experienced. So and that's what their world is like. So mm -hmm. I really do think that it would be yeah. And something yes. for well, you, other women. You took women. a picture um, also of, I don't know if it was your aunt or one of the nuns in, in her cell, as they called it. And it looked um, so holy and it looked so full, although there was, nothing, there was hardly anything there. Right. But it looked like she possessed everything. You know, yeah, was, that's without owning anything materialistically, mm -hmm. yeah. but having everything yeah. that you need because yeah. we don't need those things, you know, what, for happiness. Right, right. For right. The Where the average home now averages four televisions and everybody has an iPad and everybody's busy and everybody's, nobody's connecting, but yet these holy women of God are connecting with God and they are friends of God. And you're, you're putting a face you know, on all of that. I mean, you introduced us, really. I mean, you know, we hear about St. Francis de Sales and Jane de Chantal, and then you hear the visitations. If somebody said to me, do you know the visitation order? I said, yeah, but I really don't know anything, you know? Because I think there's some down in Mobile. I'm from Alabama. Mm -hmm. But you've shown it, and you've shown their face beautifully, you know? And, and I think it is going to lead. I mean, it's it's been a blessing for us, and hopefully there are some women that are going to look at this and say, I'd, I'd like to at least discern that life or go and place a visit here in Mobile or Brooklyn or Minnesota or go over to Annecy and really check this out. This is so high. This is so beautiful. So I wouldn't be surprised right. at all about locations. And then locations. we'll be blessed again. Mm -hmm. right. Now, <laughs> the exhibit, this multimedia art exhibit or, you know, uh, you know, pray to love, love to pray. If, if you brought it to one of these places and I went to it, what would I see? If I went, what would I see? Well, you would, there's about um, an average of 30 paintings, you know, with the captions and the video that plays along with it. Um, and, of course, the music that goes on the video is the, the nuns in France singing. So it's in French, so you get to hear the music mm -hmm. and stuff around it and the stories. So that's what makes it more the multimedia experience yeah. and with the captions. I'm so glad you mentioned that because we so, forgot that. Mm -hmm. But yes, the, 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 the singing, the echoing of wherever they're singing in a chapel or whatever it is. and Yeah, yeah their the voices mm -hmm. and, and you know what they're speaking, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, um, the next place it's going to is Ave Maria University. In right. Naples, Florida? In Naples, Naples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right outside of Naples. So, so when is go that there. going to be? October, September, uh, October, September, August. Okay. And August, yeah. Okay. Also. So why would it be going there? Is there a monastery there? Or no, they have just... an exhibit space there. And you know, um, the fellow that we were, you were talking about uh, with Mother Teresa that photographed her. Mike Calapi. He mm -hmm. did an exhibit there okay. also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have a great exhibit space. Yeah, and it's a beautiful school a where beautiful they are campus. cultivating hopefully beautiful orders, right? Where right. people are hearing calls, young women and young men, and they get to see this beauty and they think, is this who I should be? God, are you calling me to this? So beautiful. Do you have a schedule online or they could just, they can go to your website? and that there's information there. Do you have a I schedule on I need to on? do that. Okay, you yeah. need to do it. But they can contact you, will, just go to the website. There's a phone there. number there. Yeah. So you want everybody to know, you can go right to the website. Yeah. There's a phone number there. You can get in touch with Anne. She'd love to speak with in you. St. Louis, uh, Toledo, Richmond, um, Tiringham. Those mm -hmm. are other monasteries that are here in the United States. And then um, hopefully it can even travel 
around the world. Yeah. You know, they're all over Spain and Africa. Now, are there other artists out there who do the same style that you're doing? Like how to, so for there's a young artist and who's saying, gee, I would love to learn that craft. How is that done? Is it popular? Is it uh, unique? Is it more unique? I think it's unique mm -hmm. just because it's mixing an old mm -hmm. way of uh, what started off years ago was before color photography, the photographs were tinted. Right. So that's how it actually starts off with that philosophy. Then it's just carried to a heavy oil and stuff, but it's still that push and pull of mm -hmm. working it by hand. There's, mm -hmm. the, you know, the digital is not part of it. Mm -hmm. So you say so, there might be as many as 30 of your paintings that are there? Mm-hmm on these the exhibits exhibit. and their various sizes? What do they range they, they from? They range about 20 to 30 to 40 by 40. So they're fairly large. Mm -hmm. And you have them price marked? Some are for sale and some are not. Mm -hmm. Some are just tell so much about mm -hmm. that little thing that it, it would take a huge piece of that puzzle out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for now, it's, you know, maybe down the road. Mm -hmm there to look at only at this point. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, I, I, I never say anything because I never know. I mean, it's all been kind of an, an adventure. Like, well, mm -hmm. where's it going to go next? And then how are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. Some of the monasteries we've gone to, they're pretty old. So we, up in New York, when we were up there, we thought, well, if we plug this in, well, you know, the lights blow up <laughs> or something. You know, it's old. Yeah. So each mm -hmm. one has its challenges, mm -hmm. too. Is so just, it's an adventure. The one in New York is in Brooklyn or there mm -hmm. are Okay. Yeah, they have seven acres in the middle of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is That's wonderful. And you can go on a retreat there, too. Mm -hmm. So lay it's people can go church. on retreat as mm -hmm. well as those that are considering vocations right. or something like mm -hmm. that? You can do that? Do they have speakers at the retreat, or you just go there on your own personal retreat? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You'd have to contact each yeah. one and find out. Yeah, because I'm sure some... I think in Mobile they might have it with, with mm -hmm. speakers, yeah. but uh, maybe in Brooklyn it's more of a private, you know, quiet. <laughs> Time. How does the word get out? You know, when you're coming to one of those monasteries in that community, and of course you want people to come from that locale or from other places to, to come there and to encounter, you know, who these sisters are about, whether or not they get a piece of artwork. I mean, right. It, so that's it, another challenge. Good, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's another challenge, and so, then that just depends where it's going, and um, if the sisters don't have internet access and stuff, then it'll be going out to, you know, the people in the community and stuff that come in to help and yeah. things like that to get mm -hmm. the word out there. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully the diocese can do that too. Well, mm -hmm. we have one more email and it says, what atmosphere do you like for your artwork? Do you pray and do you listen to music to start? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess we all get in our little comfort zones, right? Uh, so my studio is out in the country, and that part's beautiful. I can be mm -hmm. right, right there, and um, and I do listen to music. And a lot of times I'll pop in the CD with the mm -hmm. nuns, mm -hmm. and in the afternoon it's classical. And if I get real tired in the afternoon, it might be rock and roll. It depends. Mm -hmm. It's going to change, but. I'd do that, or it might need to be quiet. Mm -hmm. But it's still um, not just working with on the Nun series. That was very peaceful and contemplative, and I almost hated to get down to the last painting to mm -hmm. say I, yeah. I'm finished yeah. when I didn't want to be finished mm -hmm. because of I think that meditative state that uh, it really helped put me in. Right, and just the interior journey that you took. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I don't want this to end. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it was, it was sacred and holy and special. Yeah, I didn't want it to end. So mm -hmm. that's why I want to create new pieces from mm -hmm. each monastery that we go to. Yeah, and there's so many Because they beautiful. have their beauty, too. Yeah. You know, just the way they walk. I mean, you know, they, mm -hmm. they just walk with grace, too. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a break at this point. We're going to keep you over for the final segment and hear more about this beautiful work. Uh, the Visitation Sisters, and this multimedia art presentation, Love to Pray, Pray to Love. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come.
Welcome back. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family, and you know we would love to have you here live on at home. You could meet all of our guests. We could take pictures with you after the show. We would love to have you come to Irondale, Alabama, and be a part of our studio audience. If you'd like to do that, all you need to do is contact the EWTN Pilgrimage Department. Send them an email, pilgrimages at EWTN.com. Give them a jingle at 205-271-2966, and they will make all those arrangements for you. We have uh, guests in our audience today from all over, and it's just lovely. Well, right now we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome to everyone at home, and today I'm going to start with a little breaking news, kind of an important story for us in America about a future American-born saint. Because this morning, Pope Francis met with the Cardinal Prefect of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints, and among the many decrees he made was one involving a miracle for Father Solanus Casey. I think you all know he is a, a friar's minor capuchin. Now, Father Casey was born Bernard Francis Casey in 1870 in uh, Oak Grove, Wisconsin, along the Mississippi River. And get this, he was the sixth child in a family of 10 boys and six girls, born of Irish immigrants who came to America after the Great Famine uh, in Ireland. So obviously there's gonna be a lot more news in coming weeks and months about this story. Now, the original story for today was about yesterday's general audience in St. Peter's Square. And as happens at a general audience after a papal trip, the Pope does talk about his trip. And Francis yesterday highlighted, of course, the fact that he was invited by and met very important religious leaders. He spoke to the International Peace Conference there. And he had a special meeting with the Grand Imam of Al-Aqsar University. Now, this is the maximum Sunni Islam teaching center in the world. The Pope spoke about his visit to Al-Aqsar. He said it was a dialogue between Christians and Muslims and the promotion of peace in the world. And then I just have to really abbreviate this, but the Pope did, have, of course, have meetings with other Christians, with Catholics. Uh, he met with the Orthodox Patriot, Pope Tawadros II. They had a meeting and they signed a common accord. And the Pope said this was a sign of Christian commitment to fraternity. He obviously met with the Catholic community. He celebrated mass in a Cairo stadium. And then after mass, his last meeting was with bishop, was with priests and seminarians and religious. And the Pope called the many seminarians in Egypt a consolation. Of his trip, he said, this was a sign of hope, refuge and help, and signifies walking together along the path of hope, and he called Egypt a sign of hope for the, for the future. So that's all the exciting news for today, and back to you at home. Thank you so much, Joan, Father Solanus Casey, moving towards sainthood and so much going on there with the Holy Father at the Vatican. And it's been an absolute delight to wow. be with you, and you. so much of this conversation has been about beauty and truth, natural beauty, man's beauty in creating things, the spiritual beauty of the visitation, you know, sisters and what's going on there, revealing that, uh, the beauty of the arts. And it's been beautiful to see you and just your connection to all of this. I mean, it's deep, it's passionate. Um, you really are a voice in a way for those who don't have a voice because they're kind of cloistered away. What's going on with you in all of this? What has this meant to you and, and to your family? Um, it's been very enriching yeah. um, and, and purposeful. I think we all mm. try to do something that, you know, is maybe more than just oh, a you know, little pretty picture or something like that. Um, and it has deep meaning to me. Right. And now with my son going with me to document and film, um, he's really good as a videographer and ob observer. He's like a little fisherman, so he has a lot of patience. Yeah. And um, what he sees is different than what I see. And so it's a joy to see what he's gaining mm -hmm. and stuff too from just being around the presence of those special women. And you know, it's just really formed a really deep 
friendship too between all of us and I just treasure that so much. Yes, well it really, really comes across and uh, how can people learn more and best support the work that you're doing? Um, well, we want to finish the film and um, we'd like to do a coffee table book about it too with the paintings and with the captions and things. So. Um, I think if anybody wanted to uh, saw it in their heart to help with that, it would be great. Um, and I know that there's other needs out there. You know, the the each monastery has it too. Mm -hmm. So it's just all out there. Mm -hmm. I think whatever people well, would think. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us into this time. Thank you for sharing your precious aunt with us, mm -hmm. oh. your own personal story and journey. And I know this has been a great blessing to many, many people. Thank you so oh, much. Bless you. Thank you. The website is Ann, G O E T Z E, Ann, G O E T Z E dot com. Go and watch the video. Go and click and look at each one of the pictures. Uh, get in contact with Ann. She can tell you where she'll be going in terms of the exhibits. You'll want to see those. Any question you have, uh, just go to that website, Ann, G-O-E-T-Z-E dot com. May the Lord bless you in a very special way this day. Remember, you're always a part of the EWTN family, and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.